project team lead from Kimley Horn Associates. I've actually been working in planning and development for over 32 years. The last 19 uh, here with Kimley Horn and also a resident of Manatee County. With me tonight is, uh, I have uh, Anna, who is a planner on our team. We also have Sammy, who is another member of the Kimley Horn team. Uh, she's doing more than observation uh, to see how things work uh, and also start to get a little bit better understanding of how things uh, work in her community. She's also a Manatee County resident. So, uh, you know, we, as Rachel said, this is a fairly labor intense type of, of project that we're assisting the county on. Uh, so what we're going to do tonight is kind of give you a quick update on what we've been doing, where we are, and what the next steps are. Uh, First and foremost, I know that there's probably a lot of questions or thoughts, especially as it relates to uh, Hurricane Debbie. Uh, and there's probably some discussions that are, you're gonna have questions about with respect to some of the flooding. So we wanna make sure there again that we can answer those questions, but there's individuals here from the county or our team that can help with some of those answers. So what we wanna do there again is kind of talk about in there, and we were here about a year ago just to kind of kick off the comprehensive plan. At that time, uh, and working with the county staff, we, it was identified to say, hey, you know, it's, it's time that we take another look at what's going on from this comprehensive plan. And the comprehensive plan is just that, it's a plan. It's a long-term vision, basically looking 20 years into the future exactly, you know, with different types of things of what does the county want to do over those next 20 years? What's it, what's it, how's it going to grow? How are we going to develop? How are we going to redevelop? What do we do with our parks? What do we do with our libraries and other things like that? So part of this is that long range vision. And you know, there is, like it says here, there's a lot of analysis. So we're looking at the data. We're looking at the population. We're looking at where people are developing and how the development is occurring. We're looking at the water, the wastewater. We're looking at stormwater. We're looking at parks. What types of facilities do we need within the county to be able to keep up with what we're doing? And more importantly, what do the residents want to be able to have as part of some of the, the community assets and community benefits? So we started this process about a year ago. We've had a couple of uh, like some meetings. Uh, during that time, we went to the various libraries. <clears throat> this is our second round of community input, and we're going to be going out to Lakewood Ranch tomorrow night. And then we're going to be kind of following up with Rachel and the planning staff and the county staff about some other opportunities uh, moving forward. Now, as part of this process, there again, we're going to be coming back to you all at a, at a much later date once we get a little bit further in the plan. We did a presentation to the Board of County Commissioners, giving them an overview and update of the initial stakeholder discussions and some of the initial findings that we had from the Kimley Horn team. Now, the one thing that you don't see is the 30 plus people behind me that are design engineers, landscape architects, transportation planners and engineers, folks that work in transit, folks that design parks, uh, the rest of our planning team. So there you go, we've got over 30 people that are behind the scenes, uh, of course they can't be here tonight, but they are working uh, tirelessly on the update of the comprehensive plan. The county's comprehensive plan was first um, uh, adopted in 1989. Sounds like a long time ago, I'll ask the general question, uh, what were you doing in 1989? Some of you are probably not around, uh, but for those of you like me, you know, we've been here, we've looked, we've seen changes that have occurred over the course of time. Now, that's not to say that the county hasn't looked at the comprehensive plan since that time frame, because there are state mandated review periods. So basically every seven years, the county's been looking at this. They also look at it on a regular basis as new items come up, or things are coming from Tallahassee in the way of mandates or new legislation. So the county does look at the comprehensive plan and they look at it on an annual basis. But this is the time in, in the, I'll call it in the plan's life, that requires a thorough, quick update. When I say quick, as far as quick, look at it, understand what's going on, identify what is needed, create a roadmap, and then start to move forward through this process. <laughs> so the comprehensive plan is like a book. In essence, it is a book comprised of various chapters. Most people will see the comprehensive plan, you, you see a map with all these pretty, uh, pretty colors on, you think, oh, that's the plan. To the contrary, that is one page of about 500 that the county has to, to kind of work with. So we have different chapters and everything's a little different. So we're looking at land use. Where do we want to grow? How do we want to grow? Where do we want to encourage redevelopment along our urban corridors or in certain other areas? We have transportation, so it's not only about the roads and getting people from point A to point B, 
but trails, transit. So, you know, the bus system. We're also looking at different ways that people can go from home to work to the parks and all of those components. It also is as things of housing. What types of housing do we have in the community? Are, are there special needs? Are there manufactured homes or mobile home communities and age target or age restricted? All of those things there again, individual chapters within the comprehensive plan. Now, one of the things I wanna make sure everybody realizes is the comprehensive plan is not the land development code. The land development code is that one thing that says, okay, here's how many houses I'm going to have on this specific piece of property, how many trees I need to have, how much parking is required and how tall my buildings are. The plan is a plan, it's a, it's a vision. It informs the code. The code is what is actually implementing the standards that we have. The code also includes components with respect to storm water or some of our other, I'll say actual engineering like water and wastewater, the size of the pipes and things like that. So there you go, we've got a comprehensive plan and it informs the code. The county commission, of course, is the one who is the final say as far as what's adopted, what's amended, and what the kind of long-term vision is, because they're also looking at a number of other things, including what are some of the budgetary constraints or concerns that they have, and what can be funded as part of this. So we've talked a little bit, what, what have we been analyzing? We've been looking at the population trends over the next 20 years. We've been looking at what the county has in respect to solid waste where the landfill capacities. We've been looking at where the pipes are for water and wastewater. We've been looking at the types of parks. How many people here go to GT Bray or have been to GT Bray? How many people like GT Bray? Yeah. How many people mm -hmm. used to go to Marble before the, you know, the county took the initiative to update that one? Has anybody looked at the plans for the, the upgraded and updated Marble? That is a crown jewel, another crown jewel that we had in our community. We were also looking at there again, I know this is kind of a little bit of a touchy subject, but stormwater at this level as far as what are some of the overarching areas and concerns and considerations we have from a stormwater perspective. And then there again, traffic and transportation. How many of the cars are on the road? Where are the future roads that we need? And how are those roads functioning? We're also looking at the trails and how people go, like I said, pedestrians, ride your bike. Uh, anybody take a micro mobility or, or a scooter or something like that or the golf carts all of that is wrapped into some of this analysis that we have so as I said we started this about a year ago we came out we, we started with an initial listening process we did a lot of listening we had a number of folks that at the various libraries that provided comments both uh, in writing as well as talking to us about some of the concerns and considerations that they had we also had an online survey that information has been uh, culminated into a formal report and more importantly it's also been provided to county staff including those baseline results that was the first step in the process was to come out to the community and start listening the second is okay our team starts to go through and analyze the comp plan what do we see that is good what needs to be improved what's inconsistent with some of the state laws that have been adopted over the last couple of years what are some of the things that we as professionals, whether we're engineers or planners or landscape architects, think could be an improvement? That's where we are right now. So we've been working uh, with staff to start to refine what we're seeing within the plan. Now we're at the stage, uh, at the second stage right here with additional community outreach. We've had the, the initial, we've come up with some baseline analysis and got some thoughts, but more importantly, because it's been about a year, we wanted to come back out and continue the listening process. This isn't the last time that you're going to see us. Uh, by any means, we've got additional uh, community outreach meetings that will be coming forth as we are starting to refine and finalize the comprehensive plan. And then, of course, there is the public hearings that are downtown with the Planning Commission and, more importantly, with the Board of County Commissioners. And then there's also the state-level review that occurs as part of this. I think I uh, almost wore the same outfit as that picture. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, I didn't. That would have been embarrassing. But, uh, you know, this was actually taken at one of our workshops last year. During that time there, again, there was a lot of listening. I spoke to a number of people, and I think I actually spoke to this young lady as well. Um, and, you know, some people may come up and go, well, you know, this really isn't part, part of the comp plan, but I had a young lady last night that said, I don't think this is part of the comprehensive plan, but I'm here at the community workshop because I'm concerned about my community. And you know what her topic was? She goes, I don't want to live in a neighborhood that has an HOA. 
I'd like to have a smaller house that I can afford. And I said, believe it or not, man, that's actually the comp plan. Because we're talking about housing options. Where can she, where does she live? She wants to be close to where she's employed. She wants to be close to Blackstone Park. Why? Because it's a community asset. So believe it or not, those kinds of questions actually kind of get rolled into how we think about the comprehensive plan. So there again, we had uh, over 150 people through the five workshops. We had two, two online workshops. That information was, was uh, kind of summarized, but all the raw comments that we have, including the comments we're going to get from you all, are being uh, stored uh, for the Compulsive's public record as part of this. So what were some of those key takeaways? And this is what we reported back to the board uh, back in uh, May of earlier this year. Number one concern that we heard, protection of our lakes, water quality, and the conservation of habitats. That was an overarching theme we heard. This one is one that's also very near and dear to my heart as well. Retaining and expanding our parks and open spaces. It's not just about where our kids play soccer or where we take our grandkids or anything like that, but it's also about the trails. It's about those preservation of the habitats and those key uh, cultural components of that. Housing options and affordability. That is a ongoing recurring theme that we hear, and this isn't just what's going on in Manatee County. Unfortunately, what we're seeing, and this has been a trend for a number of years, is if you look up and down the I-75 corridor, I-4 or I-95, all the communities along those pipelines are experiencing similar amount or even more growth than what we have here in Manatee County. Can we stop it? No. Can we try to control it? Can we try to make it a little bit better? Yes. That's where the plan comes into play. Traffic. Poor Nelson over here, uh, who's traffic and engi an engineer, is looking not only what's going on the roads today, but also what's going to happen 5, 10, 20 years, and where do we need these new roadway networks because of some of the growth. And that also matches up with a lot of our infrastructure as well. And that goes back and it ties into there again, that development and growth component. We know people are going to continue to come here. We have an incredible community with a lot of assets. Uh, and you know, I relocated here 19 years ago. I love it here. Uh, you know, Sammy is just, I'll say she's recently relocated here from Orlando, uh, but she's a resident of Mantee County. There's a reason we all come here. Uh, and it, it's, it's, it's a lot of different things. But how we address that, and it also incorporates and includes the school district as well. We'll let that go through for just a second. I was doing one of these one time and that did, and somebody goes, oh, see, you are lying. I'm like, no, I'm not lying. But, okay, sorry, bad dad joke. Um, anyway, so interactive stations. So what do we want you to do tonight? We're here to listen. So there's county staff, myself, Anna, and Sammy. We want to give you the opportunity to actually talk with the folks that are in the trenches every day, whether it's CARA with protection as far as uh, open space and some of our habitats, wetlands and things like that. Uh, Nelson specific to transportation, because there's some changes coming down, not only from the state level, but what the county is looking at to help try to improve that. So Nelson will be able to help address some of those questions. Uh, we have our housing, so Rowena and Adriana, it's not just about new houses, but also affordable houses. What, we are, what kind of incentives, what kind of projects are we needing within this community? And then also this, what we call our activity nodes and corridors. So where are we trying to hopefully redevelop and you know, encourage populations to grow that may not be in the general areas we always think about, which is along the 75 corridor. So that's kind of the, the four stations. Now, at each of the stations, there is a comment page. Each one of these is color-coded to go with the, uh, the icon that we have here. If you've got a specific question on activity nodes and corridors, use this one to fill something out. And then we've got the box in the back that we wanna make sure and collect this. The other thing I will tell you is that there is a common comment card in the back, and that's one of those, if we miss something or something that we didn't cover as part of this discussion that you'd like some additional information on, provide that. And I will tell you the same thing I've told every group that I've done, including the 150 plus. I go through and I read every single one of these comments. Every single one. Why? Because it's important to understand what the, the feel and flavor and the concerns are of the community. Our team does the same thing and then we provide all of this information to the county commission at the end of the day. So, I hope Rachel go. Oh, Rachel, any other thoughts or comments? No, I think that's good and so if we, um, I'm, not sure that everyone is comfortable with live streaming at each of the different stations. I, um, I won't do it when they when they break out to the okay. groups. Okay. Okay. Um, but you know, 
you can visit all the stations or just visit the ones that you have the most questions about um, and talk with staff and Kinley Horn and we'll do our best to get you answers. Or if not, we'll put you in touch with the people within the county's structure that can. Why don't we just have an open discussion, question and answer right here? Why do, we, why, why do we have to fill out paperwork that you guys may read, but it certainly doesn't make it to the commissioners. It, let's have some meaningful conversation and open it up for discussion to the public. So two things, the County Commission does see all of these comments. We're, you know, one, it's a, public, it's a public process, so all the comments are combined and consolidated and provided to the county. The other thing is, what we found out over the course of time and including some of these meetings, some people aren't comfortable in listening or talking at, in a more open setting like this. They want to be able to talk individually with, it, with folks. So we want to be respectful of their considerations as well. We understand that you know, there's probably a lot of concern about growth or stormwater. You know, if there's a core group that wants to go and talk with Denise or with Kara or whatever at that point, we encourage you to do so. But you know, we, we found out just over the course of time in a number of different uh, programs that there again, some folks won't provide comments. And that way, you know, the verbal's great, the written's in the record. I don't buy it. I mean, you know, you say, you say protection and preservation of the waterways. Where were you when, since you've already had a year under your belt of, of the wetlands, when they when they got at the wetlands, where was your interactive group and say, hey, we've got all these comment cards. I don't think that's a good idea. So, well, like I said, you and I can definitely catch up one on one, and I'm going to appreciate and respect your uh, comments as well. The thing I want to ask is the same thing in return. The one thing I will also tell you is the wetlands and one other topic were already under consideration by the county before Kimberly Horn was brought on. So, that was a topic and an area of discussion that was already ongoing. So, that was, like I said, running parallel. Um, I'm going to take a couple more questions and then we'll go ahead and break out, Rachel. Um, okay. But I do also want to point out, Kimberly Horn was not the consultant for the wetlands. Yeah, you had some carpet bagger from the East Coast. So, mm -hmm. with, all, with all due respect. All due respect. Please. You know, two years yes, of good you stuff. Hey, sir, just to suggest maybe a, a compromise solution to what Glenn is bringing up. Uh, maybe for future consideration, like at Lakewood Ranch Library tomorrow, you could spend 10, 15, 20 minutes with everybody together and then break out uh, to where the people that didn't want to voice their concerns with everybody and talk one on one. It, that's just an idea. And that's what I'm doing something right now, but I want to make sure that if there are specific comments that somebody wants to ask, in the, like I said, three or four questions, then we'll break out. But happy to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Glenn was just getting the notion that it, this is it, break up, and no. there's no collective. Input. Unfortunately not. Yeah. Fortunately not, though. But yes. A couple more just general questions. Young lady in the back. Um, with the way when you present a new comprehensive plan, you know, there's concerns about the wetlands, there's concerns about the F dam. Is it possible that what you present will be different than what currently is enacted? So for instance, what we currently have with the wetlands with the small buffers, what do you have more with the comprehensive plan? Could it include bigger buffers and could you know the F dam language be changed like is it possible that we will see better protections in that or like how does that work or do you have to honor the most recent things that the board has decided as far as those amendments no I mean that, that's a great question and I'm gonna give you the answer of you know if the board's direction is <coughs> that specific then you know they have the ultimate say in that you know we're going to provide certain of, amounts of information and context they have the final say, so they could be like, hey, can we learn great, good suggestion, however, we are going to do X. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I know, I, mean, I appreciate the fact that you're taking the time to do this because you're, there are gonna be some common questions that I think that you will eliminate in this period right now. The, the one common question I'm sure is on everyone's brain in light of the flooding is, and, and maybe I'm not gonna word this um, properly, so pardon me. So it seems like it's fairly obvious that the way water flows may have changed in the last 30 years since the last comprehensive plan and obviously you have storm water clearly on the brain you know in this process is there going to be like some kind of study that basically kind of read the math on where water flows that way it will inform the comprehensive plan so that you have updated floodplain maps and where people are most likely to be flooded because this is going to affect a lot of things it's going to affect people's insurance 
and you know, whether or not they decide to get flood insurance. And these are things that you know absolutely should be part of the calculation. So let me make sure everybody understands that the initial comp plan was adopted in 1989. The county has done updates since that time. Okay. Uh, there have been a number of updates, including, you know, when the state through either Southwest Water Water Management District or some of the other state agencies have changed the state rules. Mm -hmm. The county's required to update their policies and requirements and plans to address those types of things. So I will tell you for a fact, yeah, stormwater has been looked at on a number of different levels, both from the comprehensive plan as well as engineering. Uh, there are a number of basin studies that are out there looking at certain criteria as far as where the water is going, expectations and estimations on how much water is being generated and what, what is the state of that. So there is a lot of data that's out there for that. So now based off of what, you know, we, we've had, and I know I'm going to get a couple of reactions when I say this, we've had two non-standard uh, rainfall events in the last you know, couple of months. Um, you know, when you look at a lot of the newer development, and I know for the folks that have existing developments, they're not that easy for a lot of the newer development. I mean, I live in Parish. My neighborhood is 20 years old. We were high and dry. Uh, but, you know, so, so there have been changes in the way that not only the county, but the state looks at stormwater. That is an ongoing consideration that the county looks at as part of not only this, but just in general. And I know that Evan, I can never pronounce his last name. Thank you. Uh, there's ongoing discussions, uh, including through by the county commission, as far as what what now. Yes. And Public Works and their stormwater department has been doing several models so that they can work with FEMA, I believe, yeah. to update those firm maps, the flood insurance rate maps. But unfortunately, those are a very long process to get them to where they're adopted. Mm -hmm. But our stormwater de department does do quite a bit of modeling. And as each of the engineers comes in with their projects, they also have to have those calculations um, vetted through the county departments. Okay. One last common question. When will should we expect the next series of meetings? So how long is this going to take before you come back to the public for input? I want to defer to Rachel. I'm going to say probably February or March. Yeah. We want to be respectful of the current county commission and the vision that they've established, but more importantly, knowing where our schedule is, we also want to be very respectful of the, the, the new commissioners coming in because they're, they may have completely different ideas and we haven't had a chance to sit down and, and, and listen to them at this point. This is real quick, I promise, because you can't answer all this in one thing. But <laughs> is there a then and now place that we can go online and see from 89 till 9? What has been the population change? What have been the number of single family homes, multifamily built, and how many permits are now in process and then carve out the affordable? So that's a big question. And I'm thinking that's probably some baseline info that you're doing. How many acres have we paved since 89? And that's, a, that's like a big pie to chop up. And I'm not saying answer it, but for me, I'd like to know that because I'm getting very interested in this process and mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons, but mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the county in 89 and you look at it now, and then you look at what's not built and you know there's thousands of permits and people signing up all the way along. They're all on Google Earth looking for a little patch somewhere and they're gonna slam something down on it. So right. not, anyway. Some pieces of that information is probably readily available as far as how much acreage was assigned to each of the different future land use categories for the potential development over the years. Um, Rowena can probably speak to some of the affordable housing units that have been issued, but it's been more project basis. Um, so there's several different departments that would have to get involved in that data collection to be able to provide that to Kelly. Um, and I think you probably have parts and pieces of it that as a whole, I'm not sure if you have a comprehensive look at that. Yeah, we, we've actually, I mean, we've been looking at the population and we've looked at the historical going back before 1989 to where, as they're projecting 2045 and beyond that. So that information is readily available. We actually did as part of one of our initial uh, discussions with uh, when we did the first series of workshops. The, uh, I'll say we, we looked at the population center, the way it shifted from downtown Bradenton coming closer to this area or, you know, say Route 70 and, and I-75. There used to be an online tracker that would actually track the numbers and types of developments as far as how many units, what types of units, and it was on, uh, on the county's geographic information system. So their computer mapping uh, tool they have on the website. Okay. 
I'll get all that done. So if, if, here's one thing I would <laughs> drop, here's one thing I would ask is under, under the general comments, make sure we've got your contact information. Is there? And, and just on oh, oh, one of the specific comment cards to say, hey, I'd like to make sure I'm seeing X, Y, and Z. Okay. Couple more, yes, sir. So I've given five minutes late, so forgive me if you already stated this. Is this meeting, um, was it created in response to the recent storm or was it already in the works? It was already in the works. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this has actually been scheduled for a, over a month, if not six weeks. So we had talked about, you know, keeping. <laughs> that was a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> so back now back. it is safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no, we were. <laughs> Kelly and I were talking about when is the next round. As trying to get it on the schedule earlier, but we were mindful of school schedules and summer vacations for families and things like that. So as we started talking about it, it ended up this week. Great. A couple more questions. Then we'd like to want to give everybody a chance to kind of walk around and talk. Which of these stations would be addressing the future land use? Activity nodes and corridors. So yeah, so activity nodes and, and corridors, that's going to be future land use discussion. Mm -hmm. Housing is just like it says, so Rowena, so looking at the different types of housing and housing initiatives that the county has. Kara with the wetlands and uh, the preserves and preservation areas, Nelson with the transportation. And Denise is going to be closer up here as well. Uh, to be able to talk through some of the engineering questions that I know a lot of you probably have pressing on your mind as well. All right. Well, like I said, we're going to be here for the next hour or so, so please let's <laughs> <laughs>